another how to play and how to make the Native American flute video series. Today we're actually answering a question of a couple of our YouTube subscribers to kind of maybe motivate people into making flutes that may not have the equipment to do it the way that I do it. And of course, uh, you know, I don't use anything fancy. I have my router that I use on my, uh, my router crafter table. I have a, a scroll saw, table saw, a couple of other saws that we use and what have you, but, but uh, you don't have to have all this. All you have to have is maybe a pocket knife at the most. I mean, back in the old days, they may have made them with a rock. So what we're going to talk about is basically the size and diameter of a flute. So you'll have a, a measurement if you want to make your own. And also we're going to talk about how to make one without tools. Uh, this is kind of a precursor to a new video we're going to put out in just a couple of days that's going to be making a Native American flute in under five minutes. So uh, right now we're going to take a look at these flutes and discuss a little bit about them and how they work. Uh, this is a a G flute range, G range flute that I have. It's about 15 years old. It's made out of red cedar. It's not as pretty and red as it used to be. It's kind of a neat brown color now, but it's also made out of a different type of red cedar. It's been soaked under water for probably 200 years before I cut it. Uh, this flute was about, like I say, 15 years old today. It is one that I had salvaged out of my scrap box about eight or 10 years ago and decided to, uh, to make a flute out of it. And, you know, basically I've, I've played it and loved it ever since. It's fantastic. And it's also my, um, scheme, my schematic or my uh, pattern flute that I use to make most of my G flutes. I have some other ones here I'm going to show you too. But for the time being, just to give you an FYI about this guy, um, the inside hole, I don't know if that comes up on the video very well, but it's not perfectly round. It was back during a time I had a different router bit. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, it is roughly about three quarters of an inch roughly 21 millimeters if you're going that way or three quarters of an inch in diameter which is a good size to use because there are plenty uh, for those of you with power tools plenty of three quarters inch router bits available out there made out of carbide uh, so they're very good uh, bits but if you're using tools by hand like we're talking in a minute we'll discuss how to make them that way uh, this flute here let me see let me get my trusty steel measuring stick here so we talked about it's about three quarters of an inch in diameter the sound chamber starts where this top hole is, the sound hole, and it ends down here at the bottom. This one is about 15 inches long. Now, myself, when I go to make a G flute, even if it's this exact same in size and diameter and everything else is pretty, pretty close, I usually will cut it about another inch long so that we have enough extra material in case I mess up. Uh, so that's a good idea. I'm measuring from the top, not the center, but the top of the sound hole that doesn't really matter it's not rocket science so basically you can you can uh, be off a little bit maybe up to a quarter of an inch and still have it you know easily tunable to a G if, if you're endeavoring to make a, a uh, you know tuned flute but uh, in either case the first hole here is four inches from the top the second hole is five inches from the top the third hole is seven and an eighth of an inch from the top the fourth hole is eight and a quarter inches from the top, and the fifth hole, the fifth plane hole, is nine and a quarter inches from the top. So once again, that's four inches, five inches, seven and an eighth, eight and a quarter, nine and a quarter, and the full length of the flute should be about 16 inches, and then you can cut it back until you get the bottom note into a G. And then you can use my tuning technique that I use uh, now that I don't you know, I basically didn't use at the time I made this one. Um, I burn, I drill all my holes out about 19, 30 seconds. And then I come back and I burn them, as you've seen in some of my other videos maybe. I burn them out until they're about a quarter of an inch in diameter. And from a quarter, if I'm making a flute for a musician and somebody that has to have it in a certain key, um, or even a layman that's just demanding that they have a flute in a certain key, a little joke there. Uh, but if I'm making one of those type of uh, flutes and it has to be tuned or keyed specifically, I will basically... Uh, leave them all a quarter, take it to my tuner, and double check my sound and see where I go from there. And usually these top holes are going to be a little too flat, so I'll go out and, and burn them with a, a size that I have that's not quite a quarter and it's not quite 5 sixteenths. And then if that doesn't do the trick, I'll go and make them 5 sixteenths, and usually they're perfect at that point for a G flute. An F sharp flute, very simple, really close, you know, you, you can just figure on the scale if you want to make a flute that's higher pitched, you need these holes to slide up just a tiny bit. If you need them to be a lower pitch, you can slide them down a tiny bit. So lots you can do with that. But uh, in this one's case, like I said, we've got the measurements. 
from the top of the hole to the first one is four, then five, seven and an eighth, eight and a quarter, nine and a quarter, and then 15 or 16 inches roughly. Probably 15 inches will get it just about in tune for a three quarters inch bit, and then 16 inches will go from there. That's this flute. So we'll set him down. This is my trusty river cane flute that we use in most of my other videos, especially because uh, it is a traditional Cherokee Indian flute copied from a traditional Cherokee Indian flute, copied from a so on and so on and so on. This guy here is made out of river cane. One thing you'll notice is I've got a piece of leather tied over here, and that's because I've been playing it um, with some music, and I want to make sure that it was exactly an A. And I have some holes down here in the bottom, which normally would represent, if you drill those holes there, they would normally represent the actual distal end of the flute. You could cut it off there and it make the same sound. I left it long because the one I copied was just like this. Um, so in either case, the inside diameter of this guy is about five-eighths of an inch, almost perfectly, which is about, let me see here, 17, 16, 17 millimeters, something like that. So these holes are all a quarter of an inch in diameter. And then as far as the measurements go, from the top of the flute, well, the top of the sound chamber of the flute, which is where this first hole is, if you can see that, uh, from there to the first hole here is going to be four and an eighth. So that's four and one eighth inches. The next hole, if I can hold both of them and point at the same time, here's my trusty pointer pencil. Usually I use my pocket knife, any of you that's met me in person. Um, <laughs> but uh, so four and an eighth of an inch to the first hole, then it's uh, four and thirteen sixteenths to the next hole, so not quite an inch apart. So four and an eighth and then four and thirteen sixteenths. The next hole is six and nine sixteenths of an inch. The next hole is seven and five eighths of an inch, then eight and five eighths of an inch and then roughly 11 and 5 eighths, but as I mentioned, I tied this on here so I could get a perfect A out of it because this bottom note is a little sharp on this particular flute. Made back in the day that I swore up and down I would never tune a flute to a European scale. So uh, all joking aside, I would recommend cutting the flute about 13 inches and starting from there. If you cut it at 13 inches and that bottom note's a little bit too low, then you can always cut it up a little bit and try it from there. Never cut it more than a quarter of an inch increment because you might go too far. Uh, in, and within a quarter of an inch increment, I can actually fool a tuner into thinking that it's right by playing it, and so could anybody that wants to play with orchestra. So, uh, all tuning jokes aside, the first note, starting from the first top hole up here, or the, the uh, sound chamber's beginning, the first hole is four and an eighth, then it's four and thirteen sixteenths, the next one is six and nine sixteenths, seven and five eighths, eight and five eighths, and roughly 11 5 eighths to the end, but once again, I suggest cutting about 13 inches. And that's that, got that guy. Uh, you know, simple math, and, and really, I don't like using math. I like using, you know, a, uh, a flute that I copied, that I copied, that I copied, and so on and so on. Uh, I guess one day I'm going to have to patent a way to say that. But uh, in either case, uh, this is a, another flute that I'm working on for a very close and dear friend of ours. You see his little block sitting over here. I don't want anybody to give away what his gift is going to be, but... But either way, uh, this uh, is an actual piece of a cedar sapling that a good friend of mine cut and, and said I could do anything I want to with it. And I thought, hey, you know, this would be great for a certain kind of flute. And uh, I don't normally make flutes like this. I make so many of them I prefer to use my, uh, my tools to make them. I do like making things by hand. And oh my gosh, man, if I had time to make 100,000 flutes by hand, I would do it. But, uh, but I just want to show you one of the many ways that you can get a flute to be round. Number one, the sapling's pretty round already. So you could imagine if if you wanted to to hollow out the inside of it and then sand the outside with a piece of sandpaper. And I recommend holding this flute in your hand with the sandpaper cupped in your hand and usually on a diagonal and then twisting it and pushing and then pulling back and then twisting and pushing. It's almost exactly the same actions of a random orbital sander, which is probably where I learned that from. But that's how I make things round by hand. Um, so that's how you can make the outside round. Uh, of course, another way to do it would be to use a pocket knife, which is the way I made my first flutes. And one at a time is great, but those flutes were so valuable, I never sold those. Those belong to family members. Um, but so a pocket knife is a great way to uh, 
to make the outside round. You got to be careful, especially with cedar wood, because the grain is kind of fickle and it'll go in every which direction. So if you're if you're whittling on it this way, a chunk might come off that's twice as big as what you planned. So uh, just take your time, be very careful. Knives are sharp. You know, wear all the safety gear, equipment, everything you need. Uh, see my finger, <laughs> but. Uh, but anyway, um, so sandpaper does a great job, and, and don't be afraid to sand a square block of wood round. It's possible. You can start off with some 36 or some 50 grit sandpaper, which is available at most Home Depots and Lowe's stores and a lot of your, your hardware stores, Ace Hardware and what have you. Um, get you some 50 grit sandpaper. This stuff is like rocks glued on a piece of paper, and you can really rough something out. I use it a lot. It's great stuff. And then, you know, finish up with uh, 150, 200, 400, and so on and so on, as fine as you want it to go. But, but like I said, that's a good way to make it round. Very similar to the way they did it in the old days. People would take a very sharp or coarse rock or even a flint knife can do the trick. And flint knives are so sharp that you can scrape things with it and it'll perfectly, you know, round them off after time. So it takes time to do that. If any of you have access to some inexpensive tools, I believe uh, Dremels start off at about 25 bucks in Walmart. Probably cheaper at Harbor Freight, maybe some other stores. That's how I'm doing this guy right here because my router wouldn't wouldn't cut it good as I needed to. So I've been doing this with my my Dremel, you know. And you can do the sound the uh, air collection chamber up here, and then start your sound chamber below it, and just kind of go like that. And then eventually, uh, you know, you'll glue that guy back together. This is just a uh, like a half inch sanding drum or, or what have you that they sell at Walmart uh, and Lowe's and Home Depot and Ace Hardware. Uh, so you can. You can basically do that and uh, get it round on the inside. This will also round the outside of it. But that's basically what you can do. And then when you're done with the sapling, glue it back together and, uh, you know, make your sound chambers. And now, if I can show you, this is one, this is a flute blank that I've made that is, uh, is basically uh, out of red cedar. I used my router. You can see how it's shaped. It makes a nice you know, almost cigar-shaped point up at the top up here, so it's pretty pretty nice and round inside when you bring it out. And we've gone from, from this to this with my tools and with my equipment, but uh, once again, you know, you can actually, uh, you can do all that with just a pocket knife. You don't have to have fancy tools and, and everything. And like I said, my favorite tools I use are my burning rods, which are, uh, you know, easy to make as well. You can use the end of a coat hanger for a small flute, or you can use a you know, uh, a Phillips screwdriver. I had a friend that used to use one of those, or even a nail would work great with a pair of pliers and a torch. You can burn your holes out that way. If you have river cane, it's already round. So that's basically about it. And, uh, you know, if you have any other questions, feel free to post them. And I look forward to hearing from you. Don't forget to visit our website, which is bluebearflutes.com and bluebeararts.com. Of course, uh, you found our YouTube channel here. If you would, please click the subscribe button so that, you know, we can kind of hang out together. And uh, if you ever have any questions, feel free to uh, send a contact form through our website, contact us through YouTube, or even our Facebook, which is, of course, uh, facebook.com forward slash bluebeararts. But in either case, this is Charlie Montatuyella signing off, and uh, goodbye and happy flute making.